So we got the Viper Swap Z behind me and it is approximately less than two months until Gridlife Alpine Horizon, which is their Colorado Springs show. I'm actually wearing the shirt, which is ironic. I didn't do that on purpose, but I figured it's time to start prepping the Viper Z for Gridlife because it's one of my favorite events of the year. I need to do a lot of shit including get my kit fitting better, put my new foam bumper on, paint it, get it running, driving better. Who knows what else? What other, any other problems we find along the way? And of course I need to do some test driving before then because grid life is three days of hard, continuous driving and it is tiring on both me and the car. So I'd rather not be in the same situation I was last year where I was busting ass until the very last second and I was tired as shit at grid life. So I'm starting early, so let's get to it. We're gonna start pulling the bumper and then we're gonna see how well the new fiberglass bumper that I got fits. Hopefully it fits somewhat halfway decent. Unlike most fiberglass products you buy. And the old bumper I might keep as, I might keep it as a backup. Like I have, I still have my factory side skirts, even though I said my new skirts aren't on here, but I kept my old skirts as just sort of backups because at least they look better than the, well, just nothingness. And this is the first real view on YouTube of the front end without the bumper on it, I believe. So over here, we got the power steering cooler, massive intake, which is four and a half inch tubing going to the 103 millimeter throttle body. The same one that Rob Dom runs on his four rotor. Over here, we have the MoCal oil cooler for uh, engine oil. And then under there, you can see the custom oil pan I made, AN adapters with the finish line factory fittings, custom headers, of course and all the other goodies, and it's dirty. I should clean it. We need to slip the new bumper on, which is an Amuse rep, which is the same as the rear bumper, except front's from a different company. This is how the rear bumper fits, which is awful. I have to like beat it in place and then put the zip ties on the quick release. And if the quick release pops off, the whole bumper pops out, it looks terrible. We're gonna do some work on the rear bumper, but it's the rear bumper on a drift car, so can't care too much. But the front, we are gonna need to clear that whole section out, really might as well. We're just gonna go at that and then see where we're at from there. All right, I don't know if I'm gonna be able to catch this on camera, but there's a mouse. Where is he? Just heard him and then I saw him. Now he's gone. Sneaky bastard. Standing on top of an SR. Come on. Damn, he is good. Damn. How is he that good? Somewhat surprisingly, it fits up pretty decently, just straight out of the box. There is this little bit of damage right here. That was actually from when I unwrapped the bubble wrap. Uh, the fiberglass on this is really thin, which I kind of like, but the corner did break, so I'm gonna reinforce that one and probably the other corner just to uh, just to make sure it'll hold. And I also need to flex this in a little bit to make it to make it fit right. But a lot of this is actually gonna get cut when I get my FDF Fab angle kit, which is ordered, and I'm just waiting for them to make it. And that's gonna push the wheels out quite a bit, which kind of sucks to be honest, because these wheels are fitted for this. It's gonna be wider, so shit. But, uh, oh Jesus. I just tripped over my HRE and almost died. Now let's peel the wrap off, shall we? I've learned that peeling wrap actually works best if you just do it like quick because if you peel it slow it's like it doesn't like to go and it'll just like rip itself like that but if you do it quick you can just get a huge area easily 
Okay. So that's my strategy. Don't know if it's a good one, but any strategy that involves peel and wrap is a good one. And also just for reference, this car has been sitting out in the sun for about a year in total. Maybe, maybe less, but it's had quite a lot of sun on it. So we're getting a little bit of adhesive on here. Would probably help if we were hitting it with a heat gun, but I don't care, I'm an idiot. I'll just regret this later. Or I'll pay Corey and Grant to fix my fuck ups. Yeah, let's try a heat gun. All right, so the heat gun is the move. I should probably just put this thing outside tomorrow because it's been like 100 degrees during the day. But I'm impatient and I'm doing this right now, so that's what we're doing. It doesn't even need much heat, it's just... I mean, I got this thing turned on 800 degrees and I'm just kind of swiping it and it's... We're getting minimal adhesive, it's great. So now I went ahead and got basically all the wrap peeled besides, you know, a little bit on the trunk and a little bit here and there. I need to do all the seams and stuff. Right now you can see the damage that came from uh, that time I hit a deer. Luckily, I don't really care. I just kind of wanted this section to be carbon fiber. So this was all wrapped and this is all going to get painted. It's mostly solid or it's all solid now. We just fiberglassed, you know. Fiberglass the backside of it through a little bit of Bondo on the front and it actually turned out really, really nice. I did break the headlight when I did that, so I had to replace this and 370D headlights are a lot of money. So I wouldn't recommend breaking them. And then I also damaged the front bumper when I did that, but it popped back into place really nicely. And then I damaged the old hood, if you remember, like kind of little crinkle that was like right there, but whatever. So now I'm going to go ahead and pull the rear bumper barely on there. It's like these two bolts there, which I already pulled, the side zip ties and you can see how how bad the fitment is and then I need to pull the tail lights which are just two bolt and it should come off and then also while we're at it I'm probably gonna do a rear bash bar because I have the stock rear crash bar under here and I just want more oh can't see it want more airflow for the hot air to come out the back so I'm probably gonna cut some holes right there do some little ducting or something and also mount my license plate better because it's just screwed to the fiberglass bumper and it's probably going to fall off soon. So I decided to throw my car on the scales for the first time since the Viper swap and I weighed it beforehand in pretty similar assembly, I guess. These were our guesses, if you could read that. Corey said 33 to 3400 pounds with a 60-40 weight distribution. I said 33 to 34 with 56-44. Grant said 34 to 35 was 58.42 and actually we were all wrong the total weight is 32.57 with a 57.1 to 42.9 weight distribution which is actually 240 pounds heavier roughly slight two points better weight distribution so it was 57.3 and now it's 57.1 so i think that's pretty good and then i corner balanced these but originally this number was exactly the same as with the factory vq engine which is pretty fucking wild to me those two are off a little bit left to right so I might corner balance those, but I've never corner balanced a car, so I'm not really sure how it works. I'm just going at it. But I think that's pretty sick. 3257 is really not that heavy for everything that's here. And when I add AC to the car, that's all gonna be at the back. So that's gonna be another, you know, 10 or 20 pounds of stuff in the back of the car, which will further help the weight distribution. So I'm happy about that. So as you've noticed, we're also prepping Corey's car for paint. We're gonna be doing matching paint jobs still, but we're gonna be paint instead of vinyl, which is way cooler. Corey and his car got accepted into Battle of the Builders at the SEMA show. He's gonna be in the Young Guns competition or the category or whatever. So we're gonna make his car really nice. Uh, my car is still just a shitty drift car, so I'm not gonna put as much attention into it because I still beat the shit out of my stuff. But Corey's car, we're gonna make minty as we can. I'm gonna be building a lot of stuff. He's gonna be doing a lot more stuff. For him to be the builder of this car, he has to do 51% of the work or more, which is no problem because he did everything besides the fabrication and wiring. I think we'll be good. And I'm gonna make a custom front strut tower brace, custom front bash bar, modify the rear bash bar. We're gonna powder coat some stuff. We're gonna paint some stuff. So stay tuned and we're gonna keep on going on this thing. So right now we're just about all the way sanded. I am gonna work out like these super fine 
errors in the cut around the hood and stuff like that. There's just a few of them. They're very fine. Um, it's really not a big deal. You know, it's just something that I'd really like to, uh, to get perfect for the SEMA show. We're also going to be do looking at doing other modifications and fixing stuff. So definitely, definitely a lot of work ahead of us. We got a few months for that. And my car also got accepted to Grid Life Drifting. So we have about one month until then. And I just need to mostly paint the car. I'm not going to be able to get the ITBs on by then, but... Should be able to paint it, get it running and driving well. I also will have the FDF Fab angle kit coming soon in the next couple days. So we'll be installing that as well. And I got these two 3D printers. They were on sale, so I picked up two of them. This one is printing the pieces that Send Cut Send are going to be uh, laser cutting out of steel. I'm just printing them to make sure they all fit perfectly. And then this is the front steering knuckle for the 911 that I designed. So I'm probably gonna do a few iterations of that. This is a two day print or almost three day print. And then this one is gonna be running for about 20 hours. So this will be finished tomorrow. That one will be finished in a few days. And this right here is the finished product of the finished print, I guess, not really finished product of one of the adapters for the ITBs. They are going to be CNC cut out of aluminum, but it's best to 3D print them to make sure everything's perfect. This was the first iteration. I noticed the ports were a little bit small, so I opened up the ports a little bit, so this one should flow a lot better. I do still want to open up the port just a little bit more on this and um, I think it'll be perfect and then I can go about getting some made out of aluminum and I'm also going to be selling a few of these because some Viper guys said they wanted them because ITBs are sick. Now I did get this massive section cut out of the rear so that'll help all this air from the radiator which is right there. All of that air will have a lot more room to you know, flow out. And then I'm also, I'm just going to tape those up because factory, they had those little covers on them, uh, but those disappeared. I probably threw them away. So I'm just gonna tape those shut. And then the, I haven't mentioned it, but those slight little holes, I'm also just gonna throw some 100 mile per hour tape on and I think it should be good. Do some cutting like I was saying earlier, but I'm not sure yet. Also, I don't know if I mentioned this, but started getting the bumper worked out. It's all fiberglass back together. So it's all strong, except for this one I missed. This was actually from this, which is stupid. So that's why one of the reasons why I'm getting rid of that, doing a bash bar with a jack point and all that fancy stuff. I also may do another muffler on the back of the exhaust right here, but that's to be determined. I'm not sure yet. Now this is the finished product of the 3D printed strut tower brace. So now this is ready to send off to send cut send. And as you can probably tell the sideways is backwards. That is on purpose to match the reverse graphics that we had before and we're gonna redo. So I think it's a cool little detail. And then got the front bash bar pulled off, got the dimensions uh, made for the plates that Send Cut Send is gonna cut for us. So just waiting to get those and then we'll start making the bash bar. And over here we have Mr. Twitch Master Flex himself working on his hood, making cool little filler panels because we cut this and it's ugly. It's just ugly, yeah. Long story short, it's ugly. It Long story, like crap. yeah, he didn't like it. We're trying to make this car, you know, top quality. So to do that, you make a little filler panel. Yeah, top uh, quality car from a non top quality person. Yeah, we, uh, I showed you these. He started cleaning them up a little bit and we're gonna, you know, put a little bit more work, making sure that's all perfect. I mean, this side looks real nice, nice and smooth. I wonder who did that. And then, bro, I did it with an angle grinder. What do you mean? <laughs> I did this one too, though. But yeah, I mean, it was it was definitely good enough because it looks good from right here, but it doesn't look good from right here. So this is a pain in the ass, by the way. Oh yeah, no, I absolutely knew it would be a pain in the ass. It's all good, but I'll it'll it'll be worth it. So we're gonna keep grinding. Follow me on Instagram. I post a lot more like small updates on there, but YouTube is where I can post all the big technical stuff that people like to see. And we're going to get this car done. We're going to get that car done. And we're working on the Porsche too. So we are busy. So stay tuned. And I'll try to keep the... Hi. Corey said hi. Or maybe bye. I don't know. But we'll try to keep the videos flowing for you. Update on our mouse friend. Um, he didn't make it. I don't exactly know what happened. But he did. 